drink a treat, drink a treat, drink a treat for Halloween. Better give a treat that's good to eat if you want to keep life serene. Take a treat, drink a treat, take a treat, drink a treat, take a treat the whole night through. Little scalawags with fiendish gags can make it tough on you. So when ghosts and goblins by the score, ring the bell on your front door. Better not be stingy or your nightmares will come true. Oliver James and the Headless Horseman It was the night before Halloween on the island of Sodor. At Tidmouth Sheds, Edward was telling some of his scary stories to the other engines. And so every Halloween, the ghost train searches the island, looking for any engine that is broke down and sends them away to the breaker's yard to be scrapped. So the next time you're out late at night, be on your guard, for you might be next. Boring! You call that a scary story, Edward? I'll tell you a scary story that is way more horrifying than yours. Just then, Oliver arrived. Oliver! Good! You're just in time to hear the tale of... The Headless Horseman! Ah! James, you know Percy doesn't like your scary stories. Especially since they have to take the mail train at night, darn it! Well, it's not my fault that Percy is not as brave as I am. Who is the Headless Horseman? You've never heard of the Headless Horseman? Well then, you're in for a treat. A scary treat. Oh, here we go. Just gather around and I'll elucidate on what goes on outside when it gets late. Long about midnight, the ghosts and banshees, they get together for their nightly jamboree. There's things with horns and saucer eyes. Some with fangs about this size. Some are fat and some are thin. And some don't even wear their skin. Oh, I'm telling you, brother, it's a frightful sight to see what goes on Halloween night. <laughs> oh, when spooks are having a jamboree, they break it up with English glee. Ghosts are bad, but the one that's cursed is the headless horseman. He's the worst. That's why he's a on Halloween night. But when he goes to jogging across the land, holding a noggin in his hand, demons take one look and groan, and they hit the road from far to know. Beware, take care, he rides alone. And there's no spook like spook and spur. Like him and he's really burned. He swears to the longest day he's dead. He'll show them that he can get ahead. They say he's tired of his flaming top. He's got a yen to make a swap. So he rides one night each year to find a head in the hollow here. Now he likes them little, he likes them big. Are in the middle or awake? Black or white or even red The headless horseman, he, he's a head With a, a hip, hip, hip and a clippity-clop He's out looking for a top chop So don't stop to figure out a plan You can't reason with a headless man Now if you doubt this tale is so I met that spook just a year ago now I didn't stop for a second look, but made for the bridge that spans the brook. But once you cross that bridge, my friend, the ghost has thrown his power in. So when you're riding home tonight, make for the bridge with all your might. He'll be down in the hollow there. He needs your head. Look out! Beware! With a hip, hip, and a clippity-clop, he's down looking for a head to swap. So don't try to figure out a plan You can't reason with a headless man Oh, Percy, not again. Sorry. That night, Oliver and Toad couldn't sleep. All night long, 
that kept thinking about James's story of the Headless Horseman and worried endlessly about it till the stars came out. The following morning, Sir Topham had arrived. I need you to take some fish to the docks today, and when you are finished, you are to do the mail train tonight. What about Mr. Percy, sir? Isn't that supposed to be his job? Poor Percy has had an accident last night. Apparently, James's story might have gone too far, and has been sent for repairs, so Oliver will be doing Percy's job tonight. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Soon, Oliver was coupled up to his fish trucks. He was about to depart when James bustled in. I hear you're taking the mail train tonight. So? So, I hope you don't run into anything scary, like the Headless Horseman. You're still on that again? Wait, I hear something. Could it be? It's the... <laughs> oh man, you are so easy to get. <laughs> See, that proves it. You are a scaredy engine, Oliver. And James puffed away, laughing. <laughs> One of these days? Ignore him, Mr. Oliver. We've got a job to do, remember? Oh, yes, sir. Quite right, Toad. We must stay focused on the job. What's the matter, Oliver? It's James. He's still on that headless horseman nonsense. And he won't stop teasing Mr. Oliver about it. Just ignore boastful James. Sometimes when I feel scared of something, I would always tell myself it's not real. So just tell yourself, the Headless Horseman is not real. And soon you're not afraid anymore. That made Oliver feel a little bit better. Don't worry, Mr. Oliver. I'm sure the Headless Horseman's not going to get us. But he felt dreadfully nervous inside. Later that day, Sir Top of Hat came to see James. I want you to collect a statue and take it to the fairgrounds for the Sleepy Hollow Festival. Yes, sir. James felt proud. He enjoyed taking specials. But when he got to the docks, he was very surprised to see that the statue was the Headless Horseman. It was scary, menacing, and horrifying. This gave James a naughty idea. Perfect! I'll use the statue to scare the living daylights out of Oliver. That will show him that the Headless Horseman is real. Yes! Good! No, you won't, James. I am not in the mood for your silly games. This statue needs to be delivered to the fairgrounds by morning, so you must take extra care. I know what I'm doing, Cranky. Right after I scare off. Meanwhile, Oliver was delivering his last mail for the night, but he was still thinking about James's story. Is everything alright, Mr. Oliver? I don't know, Toad. Maybe the Headless Horseman doesn't exist after all. <laughs> Time for some fun. I want your head! Mr. Oliver! What is it, Toad? It's the Horseman! The Headless Horseman! He wants our heads! Full steam, Mr. Oliver! Let's get out of here! Oliver was so scared that he didn't notice that it was a statue and James was pushing it as if it was moving on its own. 
That night, all of the engines were sleeping peacefully in their sheds. When... Oh! He's after me! <laughs> Was that Oliver? And James? With the statue of the Headless Horseman? What is he up to? Get away, get away from me! Not until I have your head! Oliver and Toad raced along the rails as fast as they could. Then Oliver remembered what James had said. Oliver raced across the bridge, just in time. Then there was trouble. The statue was too heavy, and without a brake van, James couldn't stop. No, 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 ah! Luckily, James wasn't hurt and his driver and fireman had jumped clear. But the statue remained on his flatbed, and both the flatbed and James's tender remained on the bridge. Except James, he was off the rails, and he couldn't budge. The following morning, Oliver and Toad felt exhausted from last night. I hope we don't run into the horsemen again, Mr. Oliver. Me too, Toad. Me too. That was a terrible night. How could things get any worse? Then, Douglas arrived. What's the matter, Douglas? James is in an accident. He was supposed to deliver a statue at the fairgrounds. But now he's off the rails at the Western Bridge. The, the bridge? bridge? I can't, Douglas. The Headless Horseman might show up and steal my head. Just like James's story. Oliver. You should know better than to listen to James's stories. He needs your help, or Sir Topham Hat will be cross. Well then, what are we waiting for? Let's rescue James! Oliver puffed to the bridge with plucked up courage. When he arrived at the bridge, he was very surprised to see... Bust my buffers! The headless horseman I saw last night was only a statue! Hello? Oliver, thank goodness you're here. Please help! James, was it you? Were you the one that scared me and Toad last night? Yes, I, I mean, no, I, I mean, yes, alright, it was me! I'm very sorry, please help me! Well, I guess I could. But first, I have to deliver this statue to the fairground. The one that you were supposed to deliver. <laughs> After he delivered the statue, he came back to help James with the breakdown crane. <laughs> James, you have caused confusion and delay. Luckily, the festival was a big success. For your punishment for scaring Oliver last night, you shall pull the fish trucks for a whole month. But sir, I don't like fish. They're so stinky and they make my paintwork smelly. Get used to it. Maybe this will give you some time to think about what you've done. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. And Oliver, next time James starts telling a scary story, please ignore it. There you go, me hearty. Fresh fish from the mainland. Ew, do I have to? Look, I just remembered that I have some coaches to pull, and um, uh, Henry was supposed to do my job for me, and... Uh, uh, <laughs> nice try, matey, but I hope you like the smell of the fish for the whole month, that is. 
Yo ho ho in a bucket of prawns, the tiller spins and the captain yawns. Oh, I hope none of the other engines see me. Hey James, heard you had an accident. Was it because of the headless horseman? No! No, no it wasn't. The rails were too slippery. Yeah, that's it. Now, I got fish to deliver. Don't let the headless horseman scare you! After that, Oliver and Toad knew there were no such things as the headless horseman for a long time. At least, that's what they hoped so. Don't you? <laughs> ha!